I think there may be more false stories than true on the internet. Like the one that claims Elvis is still alive and has been in witness protection since 1977. Or that chihuahuas are really rodents genetically engineered to look like dogs, although that one feels true to me. And I know this one because I tried it. You cannot buy a penguin online at penguinwarehouse.com. In our last episode, I, I told you that just as there are lots of urban myths people believe, there are some spiritual myths that we sometimes buy into. Like spiritual growth is automatic once you become a Christian. It's not. You have to be intentional about it. Well, here's another one. Spiritual growth is mystical, and maturity is for a select few. Fact check, false. It isn't esoteric, it's practical. Toward the end of the first century, a group of people began to claim they had received special revelations and experiences from God and were, therefore, much more in touch with the divine, more attuned to His will. They were called Gnostics, the Greek word for knowledge. They believed they possessed secret knowledge that, that regular folks just didn't get. They were wrong. Here's what the Apostle Peter said to average, run-of-the-mill Christians, like you or me. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, He has given us very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. And he goes on, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness, to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. See, spiritual growth isn't mysterious or, or, or monkish, it's pedestrian. It's plain as dirt. It gets down into the grit of regular life. It has to do with how we treat the clerk at the grocery or the server at the restaurant. It touches how we act toward the people that we live with and how we react to the circumstances of normal living. It has something to say about how we handle our anger and anxiety, our frustrations and our fears. The spiritual growth doesn't wear a toga. It wears blue jeans. It's not for some special elite. It's for regular people like you, like me. Not a sermon, just a thought.